Hey guys and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to look at a rather new framework which seems to cause quite some buzz on the web called Svelte. Or is it called Svelte? Swelt? I don't know. However, I think it's pretty cool and definitely worth to be checked out, so stay tuned. Swelt gained quite some attention in 2018 and is in version 3 today in 2019. It takes a very different approach compared to existing solutions like React, Angular or Vue, which is mainly focused on two principles, knowledge DOM and rethinking reactivity. Now especially the latter might be a bold claim, but bear with me here. Let's have a look at virtual DOM first. Libraries like React really like to use virtual DOM because it's fast, right? Well, that might be true, but there is a lot of additional work that needs to go into running apps built on this concept, like for example diffing, which is the process of finding the differences between the virtual DOM and the real DOM. Once React has found such a spot, it will sync the DOM to the change. This makes sense because changes to the DOM are expensive performance-wise. Every change must be evaluated by the browser if it affects the render tree. If this is the case, a repaint is necessary, which will change the way our application looks like. In best case, such a repaint doesn't cause reflow in layout, but if it does, we often end up with poor performance. So, Svelte does not utilize this concept of a virtual DOM. Instead, it is based on the idea that every code you write should already be DOM compatible and changes should be directly injected. This idea leads to a change in architecture. Rather than having a Svelte.js runtime library in your page, Svelte acts as a compiler and all your components are built during compile time rather than runtime. Let's also have a look at the second big thing about Svelte, reactivity. In libraries like React, you have to define every state in a this.state object. Changes have to be announced using this.setState and sometimes you even need to use things like this.force update. In Svelte, you don't need any of this. Every variable that you define in a module scope automatically becomes a state. Whenever you change this variable, the state is updated and triggers a re-render and boom! Mind blown? Well, mine was. What a brilliant idea. If you want to define a prop, just export a variable and that's it. Let's have a quick look into an example how this could look like in the real world. First, we'll create a new project through command line. Now, I hate to interrupt, but if you want to see more videos like this one, click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new video is uploaded. Swelter comes with a default template that you can use, which acts very similar to create React app. So it comes with a module bundler called Rollup and pre-configured with everything you need to get started. Now, in this example, we're going to create a counter which can be decreased or increased. We want this to be a dedicated module, so we create a new file called counter.svelte, in which we define our markup first. All we need is a div that holds the current count and two buttons to increase and decrease the value.
Next, we define our state by simply declaring a new variable. Also, we're going to need two functions to increment or decrement the counter. We don't want the value to become smaller than zero, so let's add a limit here. To make things look good, we add a little bit of CSS here so everything is aligned in one row. Keep in mind that all the CSS in the Swells module is automatically scoped so you will protect it from style collisions with other modules. Last but not least, let's import our new module into the app, and that's it! Pressing the minus and plus buttons changes our state correctly. One thing we could add is a prop to limit the max number. To do this, we simply pass in a new prop and also define it in our module by using the export keyword. Within the incrementer function, we check if the value is bigger than max. If not, we increase the value. Let's have a look if this worked. And yeah, there we go. Summing things up, I find Svelte personally very interesting. It's a fresh and clean approach to reactivity and removes a lot of redundant code which keeps things simple. There are a few things which might be weird at some point. For example, if your state is an array and you modify a value within it, then Svelte won't be able to detect this, like most frameworks as well. The solution in React is using this .force update. However, in Svelte, state chains are detected through assignment, so the solution here would be this. Which looks strange, but hey, as long as it works, that's fine with me. That's it for this video guys, hope it was interesting for you. If so, definitely give Svelte a try and don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube for more content like this and slap that like button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.